in store uh, at a retailer, Best Buy, if it's consumer electronics, uh, the Chevy dealer, if it's uh, about a Silverado. Uh, there are different places where that information shows up. And that's when uh, somebody says, hey, I really, I'm really interested in this. I think I should take a look in the depth of the discussion uh, and uh, exploration. And then finally, they decide to buy um, or seriously considering. And then we get into how do you capture that information about the customer to have a direct conversation with them through email, through uh, postings on um, Facebook if they're uh, following you or like you, uh, LinkedIn, same, same concept, uh, and then nurture programs that allow um, the, uh, the conversation to continue. Uh, and then uh, through the tools that we then can develop for the sales force, either to be delivered by the salespeople or through uh, working with people individually. Uh, so this is kind of the model of how we think about putting marketing uh, programs together. Let me pause there for a second because I'm starting to ramble. Uh, what, what questions does that provoke for you as you're thinking about uh, marketing, marketing programs, your career? Do you think? I just want to know, I mean, I'm assuming you're going to go into it, but I want to, you're going to talk about more about how you guys actually approach this and what you guys do for the companies and different brands that you work with. So I'm assuming that's your next step, but um, we'll ask sooner. <laughs> I can go into uh, I'll, I'll, a bunch of pieces, but anyways, these are the kind of the steps that we tend to go through and, and the process. So uh, I guess my question yep. would be then, is it... All of, like, you control all of that, or do you focus on one portion of that? Great question. Uh, we get that question from the companies all, 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 all the time. So this is also, um, I'll say, a map of our capabilities. Um, and this is part of what makes us different than most agencies. A lot of agencies specialize in this. Right? Uh, GSTM is, is great at paid advertising, and the, the media planning and buying that goes with that, the creative that goes with uh, developing TV commercials, awesome uh, work that they do. But their focus is primarily around this. Um, I'm oversimplifying, but Razorfish uh, is really good at this. Um, you know, building branded.coms, um, big websites, um, and they, they kind of focus on, on that particular uh, arena. There are PR agencies that will focus on social media uh, programs. Uh, and then there are companies that focus on doing email marketing and, in, and implementing CRM systems. So the, the, partly because uh, clients are organized in certain silos as well. And you have an advertising department that focuses on pay. You've got a PR department that focuses on earned. You've got a web department that, that builds the, uh, the dot com. Uh, you've got maybe a direct marketing team that does uh, direct mail and email. Um, and so the challenge marketing leaders have today is connecting the dots across all of those different parts of the organization. Uh, and uh, I'll show you a campaign here in a second. Trying to figure out how you do that interplay between paid and down is really, really hard because you've got these organizational pieces that you've got to work through. And you have a lot of uh, agencies that if you know, that department's using one agency and another one's using another, and now you've got five or six agencies that you're trying to integrate, and there's no egos in agencies. So uh, they're all really collaborative and work so harmoniously together. Um, so, if you ever worked with an agency, that's you know that's not always the case. Uh, Nicole is uh, here with me tonight. Uh, Nicole is our HR manager. Uh, just recently joined us from another agency uh, in Dallas. Has experienced the uh, the ego issues uh, on occasion, uh, and I think it's part of what uh, attracted her to come join us. Uh, she uh, she also is a person you'd like if if you anybody is interested in internships. Uh, Nicole is uh, the, the person you want to get to know. Uh, we have uh, a talent pool that there's a way to you know, submit applications, and they will be on campus in 16th yes. uh, for the job fair or yes. fair or whatever. Um, we usually hire one or two marketing-oriented folks each uh, semester. I usually hire a creative person and then a technical person, so that's kind of the lineup. So. Um, 
would not encourage you to send a cape with your face on it. Uh, as a way to stand out, we've actually had that happen. Uh, and nobody wants to eat somebody's face. So um, I wouldn't use that tactic. Uh, but uh, if you are interested uh, in tonight, so that if you have other questions afterwards, we're, we're happy to help. You. So, part, so we have discipline experts in each of these different domains. We have about 60 people. Uh, and they're specialists in creative, there are specialists in uh, developing sites, there are specialists in planning by media, there are specialists in doing the customer insights and the integrated planning. And so part of what we try to do as, a, as an agency is you know, get our arms around all of these pieces of puzzle. 80% of the clients that we work with, we don't do all of that. Uh, so, uh, but the ones that uh, we'll really like the most, we're doing 60%, 70% of this particular puzzle, and the ones that we don't do at all, because we know how to kind of snap into the other parts of the mix, we can be a more collaborative partner in their agency lineup than a lot of others that just kind of think one way and don't know how to you know, connect across that. So I don't know if that helps get at the question, but uh, there's a lot, you know, trying to explain how we, everything that we do a little bit more complicated than that, but um, let me get you an example. Because uh, it's always easier to, to kind of bring this whole marketing approach to life uh, through example. So we just launched this campaign for SanDisk. Anybody have a camera? Uh, a DS, uh, you know, DSR, you know, um, that you need extra memory. SanDisk is a leader in that. You may have a SanDisk uh, card in your camera. Um, so. They're trying to, to uh, help people understand why to um, buy SanDisk as the, uh, the card. There are other people that make it, so how do you build the brand preference for, for SanDisk as the one that you use? So we decided to, uh, we just, they like the idea of this whole integrated approach and taking a digital century approach to uh, the, the campaign uh, planning and execution. They didn't have big media budgets. They're not going to be on TV. Um, the agency that they were working with was really good at TV, but they're not doing TV, so <coughs> that didn't make sense to keep them around. So we were fortunate to get selected as the uh, agency that they work with. So w when we came up with the idea, we wanted to accentuate this phenomenon of social sharing inherent in the campaign design. We were going to do paid media, we were going to build some, some sites, and we were going to do some social, but how do you come up with an idea that inherently is uh, about uh, sharing? Uh, and so the campaign was um, telling life stories. Um, and uh, telling life stories from memory uh, was the tagline that, that came out of this. Uh, and it really was an, um, you know, it was an um, one of the creative process, I can't explain the creative process, um, but our creative director was driving with his family on a long trip to I don't know, Colorado or something, and he had plenty of time in the car just in his like this, you know, he was reminiscing about you know family and you know telling stories and um, you know how why people took cam you know, cameras along on these trips and something so the thought of you know telling stories from memory um, just kind of came up and so cool. Um, so what uh, what we've done then is developed a series of online uh, banners, uh, some video pre-roll, uh, you know, you're probably sick of seeing that in, in some of the sites that you go to, uh, but that's why they're free sites because you watch the, the video uh, and watch the advertising, which was designed to, to kind of uh, set this concept up and then I invite people to uh, tell their stories along with professional photographers who uh, have been engaged by SanDisk and have been taking these great pictures um, and have a, a variety of different ways of, of going about it. So what, um, what we did then is uh, there's some random contact from uh, the uh, photographers that were on uh, kind of, uh, payroll. Uh, and then there was user-submitted photos uh, that created some stories. Then 
uh, were uh, sponsored on places like Facebook and other sites that then kind of drove into the organic sharing. Hey, this was really cool. I, did, I liked this or I shared it. Or we would then do paid amplification, you know, sponsored stories. You know, so that, that it came you know, into your, your news feed in Facebook or usually Facebook was the uh, most common place. But there were some others. Uh, uh, with, which we um, put it on Google, uh, Google Plus, uh, Instagram. Obviously, it's a, it was a natural for uh, for this. Uh, Pinterest, I think, began uh, to be part of the mix as well. Uh, so, um, the, this whole idea of creating content that's shareable, pictures you know, are an inherently shareable idea, uh, and people respond to them in a very positive way. So, this idea of creating a campaign that was designed from the beginning to use paid advertising to amplify the social conversation as opposed to paid advertising to make you feel good about the brand by watching a 30 second commercial. And that's a very different process for, for marketing. We think that's the way marketing is going, so we've kind of staked our future reputation on that idea. Um, it's out of our team members, so trying to get them up to speed and help them work together and develop their skills. <coughs> so that, let me pause there. That's a, kind of an example of what we do, trying to bring to life how these different phenomena of paid, owned, and earned kind of fit together. So um, let me pause for <coughs> questions that are on your mind. Um, I just wanted to know about how the creative team like, comes up with ideas. It sounded like it was more, oh, Maybe research to back up the idea? Yeah. Okay. So there's, uh, it's not quite so. <laughs> <Yay. fun too. laughs> you guys just go away. Um, though there have been agencies where that's kind of the way they like to work. You know, so it's just leave us alone, we'll tell us what we need, and we'll just go figure it out. But most good agencies go through a more rigorous process. Uh, understanding, getting some insight from the, the customer. What is it about the customer that motivates them, gets them interested? Um, and Again, developing the persona, you know, who's the ideal customer, what do they look like, sound like, feel like, who do they uh, communicate with, what do they share, trying to bring that person you're communicating to uh, into focus so that it's not, uh, I'm communicating to females 25 to uh, uh, 54 that are married and have two kids, right? You know, yes, that's part of the media brief, uh, potentially, but that's, like, I don't know, what, what is that? So we try to go through the process of, of developing a persona that, that puts a name on it that it's, it's, um, it, it's Terry. Uh, and Terry's got two kids. And, uh, they're Joe and, and Johnny. And they like to, uh, they like to play football. And uh, they've captured all, the pe all their peewee football through you know, now playing for UT. And uh, you know, however, but you, you, you kind of build a story about the person so that uh, it helps inspire that connection. You know, we're trying to build this connection, and so uh, the better you can bring that person to life. Uh, and then, what's the key pro the key value proposition, or the unique selling proposition, or the brand promise? There's lots of different ways of getting at that. And from there, then the creative team has this creative brief that, that brings those pieces together. And so they've got some parameters that then they work on. And then, what happens after that? I don't know. They just kind of. They ideate and bounce ideas off each other and write stuff on the walls and throw stuff against the walls and, and eventually something happens. Do you have a designated customer insights division? We have um, a small team. Uh, right now we are working with uh, an outside resource uh, that we partner with that uh, has done a lot of that kind of work for other big brands. We don't do that enough to have a full division or a team. But we're actually building that out uh, right now and have some partners that help us with that process. Great question. Have you been part of an ATT before? Yes. Okay. Good. I know. <laughs> uh, how do you track success and like measure campaign? Great question. Because um, clients, good clients are asking that question all the time. You know, like, I'm going to spend this money, what am I going to get out of it? And uh, ultimately, the, the measure is did the product sell? Did it meet the expectations from there? But it's hard to say, okay, we spent a million dollars on marketing and we sold 
$20 million of products. Well, there's a bunch of other things that happened in there, right? Did we get distribution? Was it price right? Did we get good re product reviews from the, the reviewers? I mean, there's so many things you can't directly control. So you try to figure out activity metrics that, okay, if we, um, and, and a lot of times having history of other campaigns is a good benchmark to start with. So how many visitors to the website are we trying to drive? Um, how many uh, views of the product page uh, do we actually get? What was the cost of driving that view to the product page to explore? How many link outs to a retailer, uh, to Best Buy or Amazon, from that product page did we get that then hopefully presumes there was a product interest? So there are a variety of different metrics along the way. How many shares did we get off of the, uh, the post? Uh, so there's a variety of different activity metrics that hopefully over time can be more correlated with uh, demand, and then um, that ultimately then would be connected to sales. But there's too many pieces in, in between that, you know, for most marketers, especially marketers that run through uh, Best Buy or Amazon, but if the company sells directly, Dell you know, is uh, really good at this, uh, you can track it almost down to what did it cost us to acquire that customer and what's the lifetime value of the customer based on what they bought. And so their systems and analytics are much more actively developed than, uh, say, a Samsung who has a lot of breakage along the way in terms of information because uh, they don't actually have the customer relationship the way that uh, Adele would. So, good question. What else? So for this particular campaign, what were, I guess, what did you ask the customer to do when these things got down and distributed to them, like in social channels? Did you ask them to share? Did you ask them to produce their own content? Both. Okay. Uh, yeah. So we wanted them to submit their ideas, to submit their photos, um, uh, tell your story, uh, and actually upload it onto the site. And people like to do that. Um, uh, and then, uh, if you've done that and yours gets actually posted, then share that out to you, to your friends. Or if you just saw one of the stories that you thought was really cool, share that uh, with your friends uh, on Facebook as well. So there's a lot of metrics that we've been gathering around that, that whole process. How many submissions, how many shares, how much time spent uh, on the site with uh, the content. So there's a lot of different uh, and, and metrics at the very kind of detailed level. So why do you want to go into marketing? I'm just curious. What do you think it's like? And how can I either confirm that or dispel that myth? Anybody? Because of who's good? Get to work with a lot of people, a lot of creative people. You're not confined to a single industry. You can, you know, you can change the industry with your like because everyone needs marketing eventually. So, yeah, so um, marketing is a. Uh, I will say a universal discipline. The reason, so I've been marketing for a company before, um, and there's a lot of value in that because you have a lot more control over the process because you ultimately become a decision maker and what happens. Then the agency or the marketing services company route is uh, different in that you get a chance to work with a variety of different uh, client types and industries, which I now uh, currently enjoy that intellectual diversity. Uh, what tends to happen is people's careers. Get, um, get formed by their expertise. You know, the, the more expertise you have, the more value you add to an organization, the more value you add, the more you get paid. So there's a direct correlation that tends to keep people on some kind of a, an expertise path. You, know, you get really good at pharmaceutical marketing or at technology product planning, you know, then that will create a uh, kind of a hierarchy or a kind of a laddering to um, you know, higher uh, parts of the organization. I spent some time at Dell uh, actually uh, going from marketing communications into brand management, which had much more product planning responsibility, pricing, forecasting, uh, got into segment marketing, which was a lot more connecting with the sales organization. So I spent some uh, some time at sales experience, at advertising experience, probably spent First ten years, maybe twelve years, intentionally doing a variety of different things, and kind of building a base of expertise uh, 
across lots of different disciplines so that ultimately in getting to be a kind of a, a mini CMO or have been an active CMO at other companies, I have that, that ability to understand the, the product marketing piece and the, the advertising piece. And some people, if ultimately you want to become you know, the top of the marketing pyramid as a CMO, it's great. Uh, it would take that diversity. But if you really like being in advertising uh, or marketing communication, if you like diverse kind of uh, challenges, then uh, working at an agency or a marketing services company can be good. Uh, what else? Why else are you in the marketing profession or seem to be marketing profession? You, you get to look at problems with a creative aspect and try and solve for each client. Like if you're in a marketing agency, for each client, it's kind of a new problem because you're looking at what each of their different weaknesses are and how you're going to fit your piece of the puzzle to make their overall um, marketing campaign stronger. Yeah, I think uh, I, what I, I just published a book uh, at the end of last year called the CMO Manifesto, 100-Day Action Plan for Marketing Change Agents, and talked to about 50 CMOs uh, over the course of my research. and learned characteristics that I thought made great marketers. That's a whole other presentation for another day. But a couple of things that you just talked about, I think I've, I've experienced, which is uh, marketer, great marketers are curious. Um, and they're not just curious for curiosity's sake. They're curious because they like to be problem solvers. Uh, and that, that combination of uh, being able to, to be curious and to be problem solvers and to use your left and right brain there is the creativity piece, but there's also the analytical piece. And so for me, that's been the, the draw of marketing, is exercising both halves of my brain. I get schizo sometimes, you know, kind of back and forth a little bit. But it is a uh, very intellectually stimulating uh, profession to be a part of. Get a question or? No? We no. needed another chicken wing, sorry. <laughs> what else? Um, I like to understand what people drives to do certain things or make certain choices. So, um, and I like to help them making those choices sometimes. Yeah. So, the, kind of that consumer insight uh, perspective that, that you're talking about earlier. How do you get into you know, the, the brain uh, of people that? Why are they making decisions? What motivates them? What drives them? Um, almost a corporate psychologist uh, at times, you know, trying to. to really get at that human behavior, human dynamics. Uh, even in B2B marketing, and we have to we have this conversation a lot with our B2B clients, getting them to understand that, that you're not selling to a business. Uh, you know, B2B is business to business marketing, but inherent in that terminology is a flaw. It's businesses don't make decisions. It's people in those businesses make decisions. And so ultimately, you're still trying to communicate to people. You know, what are their fears? What are their issues? How do you get them motivated? Even in um, just, you know, selling microprocessors from AMD to design into the next generation of uh, tablets, right? it's still engineers or and other people that are making those, those decisions. Now, you know, why do people buy a certain fragrance or go to a certain restaurant or you know, take the trips that they do? Well, you know, it's, it's fun to, to get into those, those things. Okay. What other questions can I help you with why I'm here? How difficult is it to get companies to wrap their heads around this conversion media idea? Because most of them, I'm sure, most of the bigger ones are like really siloed. Well, we have a marketing department that handles this. We have a PR department. We have sales. How do you get them to buy into this idea? Yeah. Well, I, I don't know that we've got the magic answer on that yet because um, it's uh, not easy. Uh, I think what we're finding is the best way to do that is to start at the top of the field. Uh, that you know, all unless you're at the, say, VP of marketing communications or the chief marketing officer level that has the responsibility of all those pieces kind of reporting out, that it, it, if, if it's the director of advertising, I want to talk about advertising, right? And it's, uh, it's not that they don't really care about PR, but they don't really care about PR. You know, this, their goals and objectives aren't centered around what happens over here. So I, this is one of the reasons I wrote the book, um, and, and specifically targeting marketing officer. One, because this kind of my peer community, you know, the people that, that I get the most shared experiences with, 
again, one of the, the adds some value back to that, uh, you know, that part of the profession. But it also, as an agency, this cell, uh, or this concept, resonates most with the people at the top of the pyramid. You know, the people in the silos really care about their silos. So that's a challenge in some of our clients uh, that we work with. That, you know, they're only, if their focus is the website, Whatever traffic driving programs that gets into the website, you know, that's somebody else. So um, that is one of the challenges that, that we're going to deal with. Why do you like marketing? Uh, why do I like marketing? Uh, the, um, I think the intellectual stimulation um, is, is one piece, but I, I really thought about that uh, when I was going through my midlife crisis prevention planning. <laughs> now almost 20 years ago, um, and which uh, was part of my decision to, to leave Dell. Um, I, I would, I've been in marketing uh, since I got out of school. Uh, I do. I want. What do I want to do? Uh, you know, I, I was fortunate that Dell was doing very well, and I knew if I stayed in for another four years with them and the company was on the trajectory, you know, I, I would not have to do anything else um, you know, if I didn't want to. Right? So. If you have that that kind of freedom to choose, what do you really want to do? Uh, now, it turns out I went four years early and I still had to work, but I went through the, the mental process of what do I really want to do and why uh, is marketing the, the center of, of, kind of what I'm about? And I concluded that it is. You know, anybody read Seth Godin's book, Tribe? Um, it would be a good one to, to read. Seth's written some good books, but Tribe is one of them. And uh, the idea is, you know, leaders find their tribe, and, and it's people with common interests and passion that you can then uh, help energize. And it turned out that I, uh, I one, I, I like marketing because I found out I was actually good at it. Um, so, you know, find something that you're good at, um, find something that you're interested in. I was interested in it for that, the curiosity, the problem solving, the creativity, the left brain, right brain uh, pieces of it. Um, and then do something that matters. And when I look at companies uh, or um, causes or really any kind of an organization that, that's trying to uh, make an impact, great marketing is at the heart of it. Um, and so to me, marketing is a noble profession. Um, I've worked with a lot of not-for-profits. Um, and for them to fulfill their mission to take care of um, underprivileged kids or rebuild homes that were devastated in um, you know, Central America or um, whatever that happens to be, you know, those are some organizations I uh, was a part of. You know, the, the one that mission has to be known, it has to be communicated, people have to support it. And at the heart of the principle behind getting that kind of a mission uh, supported is marketing. Um, and so to me, uh, marketing is a place where uh, I was interested, um, I, it turned out that I was was good, and it, I actually thought it made a difference. So if you can find a career that, that has that intersection of, of three components, then I think you're off on the right path. Anything else? Well, I think my time has uh, come to an end. I'll stick around, uh, you've got some more official business, uh, but I'll be here, uh, Nicole will be here, and uh, we can chat afterwards. So. Thanks for having me.